Issue 98 After a huge amount of panels are wasted in recap about Supersonic's trapping, Omni says that Supersonic turned himself in, into an electron bomb and is building up enough power to produce a massive explosion. Now, I can understand him wanting to fight someone, like attack them, have his fist physically impact them, but I, I, I find it a little more outlandish that he would want to destroy a planet. I don't know, I guess it's just because you're doing something with your powers, and so that's accomplishing something, and so he's satisfied by that. The second sun is the black asteroid heated up to millions of degrees. And in a matter of hours, it'll explode and Supersonic will be free. Why didn't it explode a lot earlier with those temperatures? And how is Supersonic controlling the asteroid to make it come towards Sonic, instead of him just ramming into a wall in the asteroid center and stopping right away? The only way I can imagine him controlling it is by running towards the wall and pushing it? I guess he's just that strong? Despite the world being in danger, Sonic wants to go to Mobius to help it instead, because his first responsibility is that planet. Again, kinda sociopathic. Like, like compare that to last time, when he told Omni to, to send Supersonic away to another dimension. It's fascinating. And Omni says he barely has enough energy to stay alive, let alone transport people across dimensions. Instead of just saying, no, you have to stay here and help this planet. Then Lightmare, the cult guy who had that box of nightmares, shows up and Sonic lampshades that they don't have time for this. Lightmare uses the box on Sonic to make him go blind, and he says that there's no point in reasoning with the chaotix, randomly thinking he's in the right, I guess. He makes Mighty have a dream that he's in a cage, and he asks for Espio in particular. After being attacked, he warns them all that Lord Sidewinder still wants to control Supersonic. Then out of nowhere, to reveal that the person under the cloak was Lord Sidewinder's daughter. A blonde girl who says that this is why she can't leave the gang. I guess she's really loyal to her father and is too afraid to try to get a home on her own. But she still did bad things. She warps away because Sidewinder's expecting her. And Omni asks Vector to stay with him because he thinks there's a way he can help. Oh, Mr. Fry is part of Lightmare's gang now. So he definitely didn't get vaporized by Supersonic. Somehow. And the story ends with Sidewinder taking off in a rocket, still showing no means of controlling Supersonic. His daughter sure was stupid to not just run away. In the next story, Knuckles and Porker are held in the grip of the robot that kidnapped the Emerald Hill folk. Zachary explains that somehow during his fall off the island, he had grabbed hold of his robot and manually operated its flight system somehow. But because one of the wings was damaged, that only slowed his fall and it was horribly injured. That's when Eggman rebuilt him in exchange for telling him where the people of Knothole, uh, I mean, the Nameless Village in the Mushroom Hill, are. Omni finds Knuckles, and we see that the people of Sonic's village are being used to power the most powerful computer ever. Eggman then says that pulling a lever will doom the people who are powering it. He can't really mean it'll kill them, because then they wouldn't be able to power it anymore. In the next story, Grammar tells everyone that he's in charge while Eggman's on the island, and we see robot troopers taking every possible excuse to arrest people and turn them into badniks. There has to be a good reason for why Eggman hasn't turned everyone he can find into badniks like this, instead of just reserving it for punishments. It has to be that there's just not enough badniks to put every person into. But Grammar is trying to impress Eggman when he gets back. Like, this is such a stark contrast to Snively, where when Snively was left alone in charge of Robotnik's empire in Sonic's quest, he just told the Swapbots to wait on him hand and foot. He didn't even try to impress Eggman. He even changed the sign of Robotropolis to say Snively Opalus. Really shows a contrast in their characters. Amy says that she came to sabotage Citadel Robotnik, but she and Johnny insist on helping the citizens instead since they're heroes. Well, if they weren't going to include putting a bomb in the Citadel that would kill Eggman or put him in a coma or to time up to arrest them in their sabotage plans, and it said we're only going to pointlessly destroy it so that Eggman could just rebuild it, which would only make him spend taxpayer money and resources to do so, then I understand them doing this instead because it's less pointless that way. They're saving civilians instead of just causing pointless destruction. And why are the civilians bothering to complain? Like, one of them saying he'll complain about the harassment to their squad later. 
And he is talking to the squad leader. You'd think he'd know that. You'd think the squad leaders would look different for showing off their rank. After the Freedom Fighters destroy a robot, they immediately get put in a net, and Amy lampshades that by all standing together, they're just one target for them to capture. So why can't they just stand up from the net, and lift it up from beneath, and crawl out from under it? I guess I have to assume that the net's electrified from the inside, but they're not being electrocuted. Why didn't Tails stand up with all the other nets? I mean, the net couldn't have been below him, because that wouldn't make any sense. He was sitting on the ground. Then the civilians get inspired to all charge at the robot troopers at once to save Amy, awesomely deciding to help pay them back. And Grimer tells them to retreat because if too many robots get wrecked, Eggman will blame him. This is reminding me of, of the citizens of Verville. The story ends with the Freedom Fighters rescued. The first two stories were by Nigel Kitchen. In the first one, it's revealed that Lightmare is actually Lord Side's daughter, and she's too scared or loyal to, ju to just run away and avoid getting herself in danger from his plan. And her stupidity also has her only try to tell Espio about her boss's plan while giving everyone else bad dreams. Why Espio? Like, I guess he is the most serious only staying man of the group, but he still argues with Mighty. I guess because they wanted to attack her right away, well, es but, but Espio showed signs of doing that too. He even kicked her. While it's cool that Lightmare is a girl in Lord Side's daughter, this whole thing feels like padding that's never brought up again, and it cheated me out of seeing the story arc actually progress because I already knew that Lord Side wanted to control Super Sonic. The second story has Eggman explain the obvious about how he met Zachary and teamed up with him, and revealed to Knuckles and Porker that they want to use the brains of the Emerald Hill folk to power a supercomputer. And the third story by Lou Stringer is about the civilians awesomely saving the Freedom Fighters in a revolt against the robot troopers who were told to arrest every citizen possible by Grimer. That was pretty cool, they were like the citizens of Furville fighting robots themselves. Although in Archie that was justified by them actually having axes to fight with. How did normal people win against robot troopers, outnumbering them or not?